welcome to my views and news another video for you with new stories from uh, tagaray and amhara regions of ethiopia some new story one new story from eritrea and then an update on the war in sudan a uh, first new stories from the amhara region where fano fighters have taken control of a city it seems they are sharing pictures from center of the city thousands can be seen protesting in the city on the street of the city fano fighters are leading the protest where is ethiopian military there was fighting between fano fighters and ethiopian military close to this city I read a video on that a few hours ago very important development uh, who is leading this fano faction which managed uh, managed to take control of entire city uh, thousands of youth are standing with fano fighters in this city second story is from tagaray where martyrs day is being observed tagaray's martyrs are being remembered get the chorada debratsian were seen today and some martyrs have been named who lost their lives in the two year long war top names obviously uh, tens of thousands of tagarayans died but some notables were mentioned today at uh, the martyrs day program details so you third pm rb has arrived in france what is he doing there what is the agenda of his visit ethiopia is in dire need of financial assistance uh, talks still continuing between ethiopian government and uh, imf and world bank ethiopian government needs uh, assurances from creditors for debt Uh, rescheduling and for uh, release approval of new loans uh fourthly eritrea says it is on its way to economic prosperity false allegations are being leveled by un special rapporteur who submitted a report at uh, un human rights council uh, session what did eritrean representatives say detail and lastly sudan was i have details for you uh, of how much sudanese air force has suffered so far in terms of losses how many uh, fighter jets attack helicopters uh, transport planes of sudanese air force uh, have been destroyed and damaged since the start of the war in sudan on the 15th of april firstly viewers uh, a few hours ago i did a video about uh, clashes between fano fighters and ethiopian military i briefed you in detail that uh, intense fighting was ongoing in dilanta dilanta warida is in south wallo zone of the amhara region uh, and some top fano uh, commanders uh, are leading fano factions here But things dramatically changed in dilanda when fano fighters took control of a city wagaltana wagaltana city is in dilanda and now pictures videos are coming in from Wagaltana showing armed fano fighters patrolling the streets of Wagaltana Ethiopian military is nowhere to be seen regional police is nowhere to be seen regional government is nowhere to be seen what happened in Wagal firstly uh Gado Andergacho you know Gado Andergacho is former Ethiopian minister of foreign affairs but uh, he was sidelined uh, he was top prosperity party leader too he was sidelined a few months ago and he could not uh, be elected as prosperity party's executive committee member to uh, two amhara leaders were sidelined uh, gadon ragacho another one uh, since then he uh, uh, has been away from media where is he we don't know but this town Wagaltana is Gado under Gacho's town. Gado under Gacho was heard supporting Fano, if you remember, when Ethiopian military launched a disarmament, disbandment operation against Fano last year. 
Gaidal Nurgachyo spoke in support of Fano fighters. Maybe that is why we saw that Gaidal Nurgachyo was sidelined. He lost his role, top role in Amhara Prosperity Party. Uh, Fano's in Vagaltana were trained. Uh, and uh, two ENDF colonels are leading Fano factions here. Colonel uh, Fentahun Muhabao and Colonel Mogus Zigai reportedly they are in this area organizing, training, rec recruiting Fano fighters. Heavy clashes erupted uh, in Ambassal in Delanta in the past few days and today people uh, took to the streets in Vagaltana. Why? Because reportedly a child uh, was raped uh, against this incident. Uh, local youth uh, started a protest in Vagaltana. Fano fighters joined the protest. Armed Fano fighters, they mingled with locals. Locals uh, chanted slogans in support of Fano fighters against uh, Shene Ola. They call it Shene. Against Oromo Liberation Army, against uh, federal government, against PM Army's government. Fano fighters were armed. They were seen leading the protest. They were seen raising a Fano flag, which they call Ethiopian flag, uh, in front of a bank branch in Vagaltana. You can see a picture on your screen showing the pictures from today. Fano fighters can be seen standing in front of the bank branch in Vagaltana. Where is Ethiopian military? Reportedly, Ethiopian military has fled Vagaltana. The camp, entire city is under the control of Fano fighters. Health center, uh, government uh, buildings in Vagaltana under Fano fighters control, under uh, local uh, people's control. There is no government in Vagaltana. Now, uh, again, I have been saying that Fano fighters' main strength is their support. Support for them by the people. Wherever people stand with Fano fighters, Ethiopian army is withdrawing. We have seen that in Gondar, we have seen that in some parts of Shoa. We saw that in Dambicha, in Finote Silam, and here too. That when thousands of uh, local youth took to the streets and they were seen with Fano fighters, Fano fighters joined them, Ethiopian military of withdrew. What will the Fano fighters do? Will they remain in Kanoza city? I don't think so. They sent a very strong message today in Volo, in South Volo, that people overwhelmingly support Fano fighters. And it seems Colonel Fantahun, uh, Muhabao and Mogus Zigai has managed to organize big Fano factions in this area. Reportedly, weapons of Ethiopian military uh, have also been seized by Fano fighters in the Lanta near Vagaltana. Alarming developments because uh, there is no government in Vagaltana. But so far, protest is peaceful. No property damage, nothing set on fire. Peaceful protest, people chanting slogans against the government, against Ola, but no uh, uh, damage to infrastructure. It isn't a violent protest. Uh, a clip for you from Vagaltana showing thousands of people protesting. Fano fighters can be seen with them today. Secondly, was Tigray. Tigray remembered its martyrs today in the two-year-long war. Tigray lost several uh, top uh, leaders. Uh, luckily, all Tigray generals managed to survive, but some other uh, leaders, TPLF leaders, uh, lost their lives in the two-year-long war. Getacho was seen today. Tigray interim president Dabratsian was seen today as well. A fourth time this uh, in the last one week that Gatacho and Debratsin have been seen together. LM Gabriel Wahid was again seen together with Gatacho Reda. 
uh, all are uh, commemorating the sacrifices of martyrs. Some martyrs were named today, uh, notables, uh, big names who lost their lives in the two-year long war, like Sion Masfan, a former Ethiopian foreign minister who was killed in the war. He was named today. Uh, Sikotore Gatacho was named to Esmilash Volde Selassie, Daniel Asefa, Abe Sihai, Elganish Malice. Uh, these people were named today in Martyrs Day program. Uh, this war has cost Ethiopia, Tagarai a lot. It will take years to come out of the trauma of this war. Siomasfen was a brilliant mind. Uh, he represented Ethiopia for years and he was an eminent diplomat. But this war deprived Ethiopia of some precious brains, it seems. Let's hope that the two sides have learned from their mistakes. Otherwise, uh, uh, commemorating martyr sacrifices uh, means nothing if lessons have not been learned. Uh, PMRB viewers thoroughly is in France. Just a few minutes ago, he confirmed his arrival in France. What is he doing there? What is the agenda? In France, uh, a conference is being held. New Global Financial Pact Summit. France has invited leaders from across the world, from Africa, uh, top leaders invited from uh, EU countries to, from Middle East to. All world leaders uh, are there. PM Abi uh, arrived there too. He met with Macron. Uh, PM Abi has. Uh, other plans as well. He wanted to ensure that France supports Ethiopian government's bid for uh, debt rescheduling, uh, Ethiopian government's bid for new loans from the IMF and World Bank. We have seen PMA visit France a few months ago too. He visited France, he visited Malta. Then some top Ethiopian uh, diplomats uh, were sent to China. Even uh, deputy prime ministers uh, also visited China. Purpose is that uh, Ethiopian government wants a loan, a bailout package from IMF World Bank, which is not happening. So, what talks under it? And obviously, uh, the government needs support from uh, EU countries, from US, from China, for this IMF loan, uh, which is not coming, but. Yamabi is hoping that uh, the loan will be uh, approved. So he is there to attend the summit. Uh, but obviously, he wants to ensure that France is on Ethiopia's side. Fourthly, viewers, Eretia. Eretia says it is on its way to economic prosperity. False accusations are being leveled against the country. A uh, UN Special Rapporteur on Eritrea, Abdislam Babikar, has submitted a report about human rights situation in Eritrea, and the report contains uh, accusations that in Eritrea, human rights situation is uh, alarming, uh, affairs are marginalized, national service is sort of uh, forced labor, no freedom of speech, no freedom of expression, no freedom of media, etc people being jailed for their religious uh, uh, beliefs too. Uh, and Eritrea is involved in neighboring countries. Uh, Eritrea rejected all these allegations. Eritrea representative spoke uh, at UN Human Rights Council session and uh, one by one the representative rejected all allegations leveled by Abdisalam Babakar. The representative said that uh, national service is not uh, forced labor, uh, that uh, affairs are not marginalized, uh, that uh, Eritrea never deployed Somalia soldiers to Tigray, and it was claimed by Abdul Salam Babak in a previous report that Eritrea had deployed. Somalia soldiers to Tigray in the two year long war, uh, in the first round of fighting. Somalia denied, Eritrea denied, uh, and that uh, was a very irresponsible report from Abdislam Babakar. Abdislam Babakar never made corrections, by the way. 
Eritrea in each and every uh, response to Abhislam Babikar's reports uh, quotes that report by Abhislam Babikar when he claimed that Eritrea had uh, deployed Somalia soldiers to Tigray. Again, a representative said that uh, in the past Abhislam Babikar leveled false allegations that uh, Somalia soldiers were deployed by Eritrea in Tigray. The allegations were proven false. Uh, and a uh, big claim from the representative, he says that uh, Eritrea is on its way to economic prosperity. False allegations are being leveled. Eritrea knows how to protect its sovereignty, its territorial integrity. Eritrea is protecting its borders, etc. Now, only striking a point for me is the claim that Eritrea is on its way to economic prosperity. Where is the way? Where is the agenda? Where is the manifesto? Where is the plan? No one knows. So, uh, which plan will bring economic prosperity in Eritrea? Anything? Does anyone know anything? Even those who support Eritrean government, Eritrean diaspora, they don't know anything. So, this claim is ridiculous. Yes, Abdul Islam Babakar should apologize about deployment of Somalia soldiers in Eritrea. That was a false report. Why? Was maybe because Abdul Islam Babakar is not allowed to visit Eritrea. Since his appointment as UN Special Rapporteur on Eritrea, he has not been allowed by Eritrean government to enter Eritrea. So all his reports are based on remote interviews on uh, his conversation with people. He is not able to visit Eritrea, to visit maybe Tigray as well, I think. So all his reports are based on, uh, reports are remote reports, you can say. That is why the reports are bound to be uh, filled with some unverified information. But he should make corrections at least. Last year, Sudan, the losses of Sudanese Air Force are being shared by a new source. Uh, by an expert rather who monitors uh, uh, air force capabilities of different countries. We, we know that when the war broke out in Sudan after that, uh, Sudanese air force uh, suffered losses. Why? Because RSF took control of some air bases. Jabal Olia came under RSF control, Marwe air base under RSF control. The RSF fighters remained in position for some time, then they withdrew and they damaged aircrafts while they were there. And some were shot down as well. So total losses suffered by Sudanese Air Force uh, are significant, I would say. So far, Sudanese Air Force has lost 10 fighter jets, fighter jets and bombers, 3 MiG-29, 4 Su-25, 3 FTC-2000, which is a trainer aircraft and light combat aircraft. So these 10 Aircrafts have either been shot down or they have been damaged, firstly. Secondly, nine transport planes of Antonov company, mostly like uh, Antonov 26, 30, 32, Antonov uh, 72, etc. Ten Antonovs shot down or uh, uh, down to, uh, or collapsed due to technical failure or hit at basis. 10 attack helicopters, MI-24, etc. Again, shot down or which uh, crashed or which was damaged while they were parked at air bases. Transport planes, I, I mentioned, and then some residential aircrafts because uh, Sudanese uh, Khartoum International Airport is under RSF control. Several aircrafts were damaged there too when RSF stormed the airport. So, Sudanese Air Force has suffered significant losses so far. RSF does not have any air power, it does not have any uh, air f uh, aircrafts, uh, helicopters. It only has, I think, a few drones. Even those drones are ordinary uh, commercial type drones. So, while Sudanese Air Force has suffered significant losses, we cannot say that the Sudanese Air Force is not in a position to carry out attacks. A strike is continuing. Egypt could be supporting Sudanese Air Force, as was claimed by some sources a few weeks ago, though no uh, solid evidence so far. 
but no one would be surprised if evidence comes out that Egyptian Air Force is supporting a Sudanese uh, uh, Air Force. So far we can say that Sudanese Air Force has suffered losses, uh, but it is still in a position to carry out air strikes which it is conducting in Khartoum, Bari, Umidali.